Ask any American in a random town and they are going to tell you America is number one. Yeah! However, after living in India for over a year and a half, America should steal these 10 things from India. Before I begin this video, I would be remiss to have you thinking that I don't enjoy and I'm loyal to and love uh, where I grew up. I feel lucky and I'm happy to be an American, if you will. And while I'm not one of those guys to tattoo the American flag on my face and to scream out America, anything like that too much, I've traveled around America extensively. I've hitchhiked over 25,000 miles, mostly in the US. If you want to see those trips. I have 21 videos of going across the country with my girlfriend at the time and I have another video where I took 930 selfies with Americans as I'm traveling across. So I'm not one of those people who just doesn't like America or anything like that. I do. However, after living in India for a while, there's some things we can improve on. First one's a bit messy because I know that Americans have strong feelings about it, and so do Indians. But the first thing we should steal is the bum gun. Quick interruption to invite you to subscribe to my channel. I share India travel tips every week, and I'd love to have you a part of our community. I do think toilet paper should still be a part of the process, but I'm not one of these Americans who thinks we should only use toilet paper and if it was the coronavirus lockdown that I'd stock up with hundreds of rolls. Sorry Ben, I disagree. I gotta take care of my bottom line. It's so much smarter to have one of these installed in your bathroom and use so much less toilet paper. And I know Indians feel strongly about this. I polled some Indian travelers on Facebook and asked them if they use toilet paper. 63.7% said they never use toilet paper. 25% they said they sometimes do, and only 3.48% said they always use it. Avon sums it up well. This whole toilet paper usage thing is a great communication gap. Westerners who use toilet paper think that those who do not use it do not clean themselves. This, of course, is far from the truth. Indians who do not use toilet paper but use water to clean themselves naturally feel that paper cannot clean as well as water. America, we should steal this. Yoink. Another thing we should steal is handmade furniture. I got this chair with extra long arms so I can rest my computer and do my work. Made for 50 bucks by a local guy. That couch back there, also handmade by a local guy. You can get organic cotton shirts made for 20 bucks by the best tailor in town. You can get regular cotton shirts made by not the best tailor in town, for five bucks. I got my bed made for less than a hundred dollars by some local craftsmen. Okay, four, I pay 4,000 now, okay. and then on Tuesday, 11 o'clock, 2,500 for a bed that's uh, 60 inches, 78 inches, 20 inches. Took less than a week. None of this prefabric wood that you buy from Walmart or Amazon. People here are making things with their hands at reasonable prices, and it's a lot of fun and good quality. Let's steal that, America. Yoink. Here's the firework place, and when it's open, which is usually during the winter months or around holidays, you can get some great deals on some epic fireworks. It's five, four. I would consider them almost professional sized at the price of like a bunch of little bottle rockets you'd get in the US. And there's more opportunities to shoot them off. Yoink. India has a number of festivals and reasons for celebration. We have Holi here, which involves throwing colored chalk on people. I'm sure you've probably heard of it. We have Deepalm, which involves where I live, lighting a fire up on that mountain with 2,000 liters of clarified butter. Yummy. That has been blessed by holy men. And then for 10 days, it's lit up. And you can see it over there. It reminds me of like some Lord of the Rings type 
uh, signal fire to, to show the other troops the uh, opposing battle is coming. Or something like that. You got Diwali, you got Indian Independence Day, you got Pongal, you got Christmas, you got Et E Afert. I'm not pronouncing that well, but that's here too. Where I live every month, people walk around the local mountain to cleanse themselves of their karma. Thousands of people are in the street for this. India is kind of like one big party. Yoink. I mentioned in the last video, but transportation is so reasonably priced. I can rent this for 45 bucks a month, which is expensive here. The amount of options you have to travel around India is way more than in the US. There are reasonably priced trains, buses, domestic flights, almost any flight in India will be less than $100 one way. Trains you can get for eight hours, eight hour trips overnight for 15 to $20. Buses to go four hours away can be just a few dollars. You would never find that in the US. There are also auto rickshaws, bike rickshaws, and even bull carts. I mentioned this in my last video entitled 533 Days in India, an American Tourist Experience. But it's worth mentioning again, India has so much more fun roads to get around. Maybe it's just where I live in a smaller city with villages close by, but there are trails going everywhere and it's totally cool to go driving on them. Where I grew up in the US, the thing to do was buy a truck with four wheel drive and after it rained, go into a field with your truck and your buddies and drive as fast as you can, doing donuts or circles, spinning mud in the air. If you don't get stuck, you weren't going hard enough. needs to steal some of these beautiful colorful carved sculptures in India everywhere there are these temples near my house there's one next door down the street there's another one down the street there's another one temples in India are as popular as McDonald's in the US the churches in the US, we need to step up our game. Although this angel with the golden sword is pretty cool. We need more interesting sculptures to bring in the people. Take a page from India, look at this. Why are there no sculptures on churches where someone's getting their head cut off? What is up with Christianity? Let's see, what price is this? 30. 30 rupees. 30, okay, I'll, I'll take this one. English? In India? One chai? Another cool thing is that they have these chai shops everywhere here in India. And a guy like our friend here, our chai wala, uh, making chai for 10 rupees for half a cup. What if Starbucks or indie independent brands were everywhere serving uh, little bits of tea or coffee for what? 10 rupees in, in US is maybe 15 cents, 20 cents, maybe 25 at the most. How about we put some little independent coffee makers on every block, uh, every half block, every few steps like they are in India for some delicious hot beverages. <laughs> the more chai the better. America needs more chai. America? USA? 
India should invest in some coffee mugs though. These things are so hot. I don't know how they drink them. The final thing America could learn from India is let's get some more people. India has more than a billion people, the second most people in the entire world. America is just not number one there. And I know this could cause some problems. However, if I'm just speaking for myself, the fact that India has so many people makes for great street photography. I can drive 10 minutes from my house and it's almost the same population density as what you're gonna see in a huge city like New York City, Los Angeles. I was living in Austin, which is a big city in Texas. There's hardly any people on the streets. You can't go out and take street photography. It's weird if there's like one person on the street and you got your camera and that person's like, dude, what's, what's this guy with the big camera coming up to me? In India, there's so many people, there's so much happening. I can just blend in and get some decent photographs. America, we need to have more babies.